गुड इवनिंग लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम टू जी जयपुर लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल ब्रॉट यू बाय रजनी गंदा एट द चार बाग इट्स वंडरफुल टू सी ऑल फ्यू थिंग्स प्लीज कीप द सेंटर आयल फ्री इट्स फॉर योर ओन सेफ्टी कीप योर मोबाइल फोन ऑन साइलेंट इफ यू हैव अ कॉल यू कैन टेक इट आउटसाइड द वेन्यू इट्स अ नो स्मोकिंग जोन फ्लैश फोटोग्राफी इज प्रोहिबिटेड यू कैन ट्वीट यूजिंग हैश टैग सी जे एल एफ और टैग जी जयपुर लिट फेस्ट uh to do such a big festival we have a lot of sponsors uh those are z rajnigandha incredible india google british airways mahindra humanity center ford our book partner amazon.in beverage partner coca cola public diplomacy tourism partner rajasthan tourism university partner amity un women the glen levitt data partner mts the media partners patrika group hindustan times dna dainik bhaskar radio mirchi ambit Arts and Culture of uh, Meghalaya, Aga Khan Foundation, Yan Mikalski, IQ, Penguin Random House, YPO, WPO, our venue partner Digi, uh, Ram Bag Palace, there's Lee Meridian, Clark's Armour, Fortis, Kai Zunga, Royal Treasure, Kingfisher, ITC Hotel, and Dobroy. So, the next session, which is something you've been all waiting for, uh, Hamlet's Dilemma, presented by Z Entertainment. We welcome Vishal Bharatwaj. Bashrat Peer, Tim Sapil, Jerry Bratton, introduced by Suhel Seth. Can we have them on stage, please? Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just so that you have a lot of fun with Shakespeare, who's sadly been eliminated from most school curricula in our country, <clears throat> because we are still debating whether we need uh, eminent other writers of soap opera to replace him. We are blessed that at the Jaipur Literature Festival, the Z Jaipur Literature Festival, we have the talented bunch discussing who is unarguably. one of the greatest literary influences in the world we all grew up on shakespeare at least some of us who were in calcutta uh, people in delhi are still growing up on rahul gandhi but we leave that for another debate <laughs> and rahul gandhi is growing up himself <laughs> i won't go through the individual introductions and i'll get straight into the topic it's hamlet's dilemma in the context what i would imagine because vishal is here of how today in a very splendid manner a man like vishal has actually used shakespeare not just as the inspiration but as the thematic strain in the trilogy of his whether is makbul omkara and now haider so i'll get off get off with the questions straight away and then we can all you know flow in why shakespeare in a country that's fast losing him because someone will credit you for discovering shakespeare rather than shakespeare himself <laughs> i think that, that that's a very big compliment for me but uh, i think the shakespeare is the most dramatic writer i have ever read in my life he's so dramatic his stories are so timeless you can put his play i i mean any play either in future or past or present any community and you find because there are such basic human conflicts that you you uh, you can't get rid of and he's that's why he's timeless that's why he he's so relevant in in i mean we i made it in india we can make make it in pakistan anywhere we can make it it's boundaryless that's why and do you think that when you were looking at shakespeare's plays there was an intricate parallel contemporary plot that was working that was workable yeah i mean um, that's why you know i can i can live my life on shakespeare i can pick up any play and uh, make it in a political backdrop or uh, underworld backdrop or anywhere and uh, when i read basharat's book curfewed nights the first thought was uh, 
that why not Hamlet in Kashmir and uh, his book was so so beautifully written that uh, in fact to me the Kashmir became Hamlet itself. Bashar, that's, that's an interesting thing and in the film it's a resonating theme. To be a militant or not to be. To be on this side of the border or not to be. So obviously that's an underlying theme which we leave for later. Do you believe and there is a lot of discussion on the fact that the AFSPA that was portrayed was pretty unidimensional. I for one didn't know about the term half widows that was used in the context of, of mm. wives who had lost their husbands or whose husbands had disappeared. Right. What prompted you to actually interweave the book with the with this, with this cinema, uh, cinematic theme? Well, you know, <clears throat> it's, I mean, we use some images from the book, but when Vishal and I uh, first met, you know, I, I was very familiar with his work, and he said, can we do this in Kashmir? And I said, you know, all the, the themes of, of betrayal, of tension, you know, all the dark forces in Hamlet, uh, I, I found echoes of those themes in Kashmir. And then I just went straight to the text. I told him, look, I'll go, I'll, I'll look at the play again, and I'll tell you what I can make of it. Now, I, I, I just, I, I read the text, the play, and it took me a week before I could call him and say, look, this is the story. Because, you know, those characters were leaping out. The, uh, the crisis, you know, when you start out, you just look at the main adaptation. I mean, you have these two brothers. You have King Hamlet and you have Claudius. Okay, when is that? So the question for me uh, as a writer is, okay, what is that juncture in recent Kashmiri history when a brother really betrayed his brother or, or, or murdered his brother? You know, it's, what was that point? Look, we had 20 years of intense conflict, but you always know there's a, on the graph, there's a point when the society was torn into two, when, when brother bounced upon the brother. And there was a moment in mid-90s, in 95, with the creation of the Salva Judum style counterinsurgent force, uh, which was run by the army and uh, set to work in counterinsurgency. And that was when the brother, you know, there were Kashmiris killing Kashmiris, there were people from the same family on two sides of the story. And I, I clearly, the moment I looked at the play, I knew my Claudius is someone who comes from that world. And, and a noble King Hamlet, you know, you always had in a, in a conflict, you always, the greatest heroes, and I always maintain this, that some of the greatest heroes of Kashmir are the unsung doctors who, who spend hours and hours of their life, days and months, saving lives. So that's how King Hamlet became a doctor. And in the progression of his disappearance, his death, discovery of his body, we are, we are dealing with a militarized world. And when you deal with the question of a militarized world, one of the things that stands out in Kashmir that we do have a colonial law which gives soldiers posted their complete impunity. They, it's a license to kill. It was a law that was brought in by the British to crush Gandhiji's Quit India Moment, 1942, and that's when thousands of Indians were massacred using this law. And you have this law in place in the Northeast, and you still have it in place in Kashmir. Not much has changed. We are still using a colonial law to justify murder. And clearly, I mean, and when we were at the question of soliloquies, there's a key scene where, you know, our Hamlet, Heather, is raving and ranting at a traffic, you know, roundabout in Srinagar. I mean, it was in some ways, you can say, a tribute to our own Toba Taksing moment when, when a madman questions the idea of competing nationalisms. What would, what would this man be allowed to say in feigned insanity in, 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 on a traffic roundabout that you really cannot otherwise say? So he says, look, this is my critique of your militarization. I will say, I will, I will read out some utterly nonsensical jokes about a bank robbery, about this, I'll make wordplay, use Hebrew words in a bad way, but behind this madness, look, this is what I'm telling. He's reading out the bare act of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, and that's what Vishal and I came to. We couldn't look away from it. This is the world we're going into. It's interesting, but, and before we bring Jerry and Tim in, it's interesting that in the play, and Shakespeare's plays, especially these of this genre, are riddled with with emotional conflict, and Hamlet is 
an epitome of emotional conflict. But the interesting part is the very doctor that you talk about, when asked, why have you brought the terrorist home by Gertrude Ala Tabu, says, because I believe in life. And yet it's the same doctor who implores Haider through Rudhar ki aankho ke beech mein goli marna. Because these are the eyes that he used to entrap your mother. So that's also an inherent conflict. And how do, you, how do you address these, I mean, the cinematic license apart, what was it that was going on in your mind to end it in that kind of manner? Look, he is a man who, on a regular day, you know, at the moment when you see him in the beginning operating on an on a, on a, on a injured or a, on a sick militant, he says, I stand with life. And that is a doctor who is still leaving a regular life. He still has a family, he has a home, and that's his first instinct. This is a man you know, who spent a long time training, who spent most of his time in an emergency room saving lives. That's his first instinct. Okay, I don't care whether I might get into trouble, I'll still save lives. But the point at which he gives King Hamlet's ghost, the ghost's command through Rudar of avenge me, the moment he says that, by that time, his life has been torn to pieces. His house has been blown up. He's in a, he's in a hideous torture chamber. There's a man who's tortured and broken. And any of us goes through that. I don't know whether we can retain that nobility. Human beings, we go through hell and we change. And it's a character who, who, who has this moment of weakness where he asks for revenge. He's, you know, he wouldn't be noble and say, you know, look, I can turn the other cheek. People don't always do that. Jerry, to uh, bring you in terms of what Jerry does, he, he also steers the Global Shakespeare Project, uh, which is basically enhancing the spread of Shakespeare, which I will leave him to, to define. There's a very interesting play that's happening here. I mean, I don't mean as a play-play, but play of characters, play of association of Shakespeare. Are you enthused by the fact that today the world's largest film industry is actually using a scriptwriter uh, who was born many, 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 many uh, years ago yeah. and using him to such fine a clip? No, I am. I mean, I teach Shakespeare at London University and I mean, it seems to me that what this film has done is updated the whole tradition of Shakespeare on film. It seems to me now it joins in with all the great films by Branagh, Olivia, Kaczynczew and now it's taken that a stage further. But it is interesting about what is it about this play? Why is this play so powerful? Why does it have this global reach? When I teach it to my students in London, they often say, I completely identify with Hamlet. I think I am Hamlet. I say, why are you identifying with a 16th century Danish prince who's had his dad murdered? In what way can you identify with that person? <laughs> yeah. And then they go, oh. But I think that what's interesting is that there, there has been this reach globally. I, I always think, find it very funny as well that the first time that the play is performed outside England is in 1608. It's performed on an East India ship going to India yes. off yeah. the west coast of, of Africa. And now we think that actually might be a, a, a forgery. So nothing's ever simple with Hamlet. I think. Not, there's always some problem with Hamlet. But yeah, what we've seen throughout the 20th century, and I think that now this film is part of a very uh, important lineage, is the way in which there's a flexibility about this play that has allowed both of you to basically update the play. We see the play in a new way through, these through the film, actually through the trilogy as well. They've all illuminated the play for us as Shakespeare scholars. At the same time, you can all have watched this film without reading Hamlet. I'm, and and it's, I'm sure that you feel that's the case. But we have a whole tradition where this has been going on throughout the 20th century. So we have instances of Chinese updatings of Hamlet where Hamlet becomes a Confucian figure who of course is interested in questions of filial piety. That's happening in the 1940s. I know, I know, Vishal, that the Soviet tradition of Shakespeare on film is very important for you. Kaczynczew, in the 1950s, Kaczynczew is a Russian filmmaker who as soon as Stalin dies, what's the first thing that he does? He does a production of Hamlet. And in 1964, he does another version of Hamlet, which I think is very interesting in, in comparison to what you're doing because it's not the English language tradition that we tend to now think of Hamlet. It's all about Hamlet. It's all about Hamlet and his self. He's always banging on about his self. 
actually what you've done is put it much more in negotiation with the politics. And that's what happens with Kazintsev. And you know, it's worth knowing that the Arabic theatrical tradition is also doing something very similar at the moment. So people like Suleiman al-Bassam is a wonderful Kuwaiti playwright um, who's just done a play called The Al-Hamlet uh, Summit, where he updates that tradition of Hamlet into the current Arab Spring moment. I mean, he actually, he sees Hamlet, interestingly, through Egypt in the 1950s and 60s and NASA, and he says, Hamlet is this great flexible figure who you can understand working through questions of revolutionary anti-colonial politics, and you can now put him into the Arab Spring as a disillusioned intellectual. And I, I just think it's wonderful that, you know, there's no other play where you can use Marx and Freud at both the same time to read a figure like Hamlet. And in a way, you're doing the same thing. It seems to me that the film d does both. The first half, it seems to me, because it's so engaged with the public political dimension, and that works around the play. And then, as it were, you flip it, and it becomes much more about the relationship between Hamlet and the Gertrude figure. And then you have, as it were, the Freudian reading, and both are possible. Yep. And I think that that's what you've done, and I think it's an extraordinary achievement. Tim, <clears throat> being born and raised in Calcutta, we had a tremendous tradition of Shakespeare on stage. There was a huge emphasis on, on staging a lot of Shakespeare plays. That has, alas, died largely in India. I mean, there are adaptations and versions, but far in between. You come from a place which still celebrates the theatrical versions of Shakespeare, where people can actually engage. Do you see more and more of that in home country, or do you see that spreading across the world in the manner that Jerry spoke of? Well, both. Both. I mean, I, I think we have a very dynamic and active Shakespeare production scene in the UK still. You've got new generations of directors and actors and designers reinterpreting Shakespeare all the time. And you've got exciting Shakespeare and you've got uh, dull Shakespeare in the UK. We have both and we have a lot of it and that's a good, that's good. We grow up in that environment. But as I travel around the world in the last uh, 10 years, particularly I've been tra traveling in India where I created a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream with actors from all over India who spoke eight languages, English and seven Indian languages, and who brought different acting traditions and acting approaches to Shakespeare, which really blew open my imagination and my sense of what's possible. And then I spent three years traveling in the Arabic world where I worked on a production of The 1001 Nights, but where I met Suleiman, for example, the guy who Jerry mentioned, and, and saw how Shakespeare was coming alive in the Arabic context. And now I'm spending a lot of time in the former Soviet Union where I see very exciting and important reinterpretations of Shakespeare too. So I think that uh, you know, through my life I've seen a very important versions of Shakespeare productions coming from Georgia or Romania or Africa or India. Uh, Habib Tanvir's work on Shakespeare was very important Phenomenal. to me too. So I think, I think both is the, is, 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 the, is the sort of rather uninteresting but true answer. And I think what, what's very interesting for me being part of this discussion is I think everything that's been said about Vichel's work is true. The reason why there's so many of you here today is because he's doing absolutely brilliant work and he's doing that with Shakespeare. And it, what, what he's doing with Shakespeare is getting to the essence and the detail of something very true to those plays. He's really understanding the plays and he's understanding them with real intelligence and in ways that are very surprising. And that's wonderful. And I think we stand together as brothers, but we go in completely different directions, and that's why it's worth just pausing for a moment and why I'm on this stage, and I hope I don't bore you for five minutes just to explain that, because it is an important part of the picture, however brilliant the work that Vishal's doing. The wonderful actor who plays Haida, I saw in the interview uh, with, the, with the, um, the, the, the sort of special features DVD on the Haida DVD, and he says that uh, for him, he feels that he might have been bored reading Hamlet as written by Shakespeare, whereas working on the text with Vishal brings Hamlet alive for him. And I think that's wonderful, unreservedly wonderful. <laughs> and I agree that we mustn't bore people, that people getting bored with Shakespeare is a sin which we must not commit. But I then go in a completely different direction than Vishal. I'm a stage director, one. So for me, um, Shakespeare comes alive on the stage. I'm not saying he doesn't come alive on film, because he does, but my understanding of Shakespeare 
is explored on stage, live as a theatrical writer. Secondly, and I think this is the more profound thing, is the second thing, is unlike Vishal, I work with the text. I work with the whole text as written by Shakespeare. Also intending not to bore people. And I would hope and I would claim... <laughs> no, but, but I would like to stop you for a moment. I doubt Shahid would have even read uh, Hamlet. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. That's very good. Well, let me... Let me he hadn't yeah, read it, right? Yeah, no. That's very good. Uh, well, uh, he does a very good job of it. But the thing is <laughs> that, that for me, the task of my life with Shakespeare, the, the absolute aim of my life with Shakespeare is that people will sit in a theatre and watch the text, the whole text, which doesn't mean you don't cut. You can cut. You can cut this, you can cut that. That doesn't matter. It's not, it's, not, it's not like precious. It's not like a religious text. You can cut what the hell you want. But on the whole, what I want to achieve is that people will sit in the theatre and watch Shakespeare and be electrified and feel his proximity to them and feel his relevance. But what I wouldn't do, because I don't know how to do it, is I wouldn't set the plays in the concrete context of say, a Kashmir, or so on. For me, Shakespeare is uh, strange and is unresolved and is not concrete, is something almost um, ancient as a theatrical writer, at the same time as being modern in his understanding of uh, human psychology and politics and the world that we live in. And to get that strangeness, to get that unique character of Shakespeare, means that what I personally do is I don't contextualize him in a specific situation. I try, as hard as I can and as well as I can, to cut through and away from who I am now to get to the heart of something unique and strange and weird and wonderful in that writing. But and that's the theatrical event of Shakespeare that I'm aiming for. Okay, he disagrees. No, I don't disagree, but I just, I, I really, I want, I want Vishal and Basha, I want you to talk about what it means to, to do translation of really the, 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 the plot and the story, but also linguistically, you're playing very clever games with language that you're actually playing with the, with the, with the, with the play text. And I know, uh, Tim's right, but I also want you to talk about this as cinema. It's a different format, okay? And Tim's absolutely right, but you aren't, you're doing something very specific about that, and it's in a lineage of under, other cinematic attempts. You know? And again, Hamlet is Hamlet's such a, an extraordinary play because it lends itself, like no other Shakespeare play, I think, to the cinema. Because, of course, it's so much about the notion of spying and surveillance and the way in which the eye moves. But cinematically, that's very powerful for you. And I just wondered if you could say something so, about that, about translatability in language. The way you're playing with language, you know, the chutzpah, afspah, I mean... It, it, yeah. So, I, I, want, I want Vishal to come in, both on, on the point that Jerry raised, and on another point which I tend to have a slight disagreement with you. A lot that was written about Shakespeare's political plays <clears throat> was the fact that he was sending out a very powerful political message to the establishment. Do you believe that especially in Haider, there is a political message that you're also underscoring. Because, and I think the trick is in the, in the final text that appears on that black screen at the end of the film, which basically says from 4.2 million, you've got what, 24 million tourists, and it's a new Kashmir. I mean, it doesn't say new Kashmir, but yeah, I'm allowed some license. And uh, you're basically saying, and then you end by saying that the army has done sterling work qua the floods in Kashmir. So, no, no, you don't have to defend yourself. I'm just raising a point to understand if there was also a political message that you wanted to send out. I think more than political message, what uh, I felt and then when I read Basharat's book and I spoke to him later and we had long sessions, we both, what I realized that whatever, whatever has happened in Kashmir, we have not been able to capture that in our films. We have been very, very unfair to Kashmir and the pain of Kashmir, what he has gone through, uh, what Kashmir has gone through. Like uh, you said, the half-widows. I mean, to hear that term where a lady has to wait for four years, 
and if the husband doesn't come back only then she can get married so i mean to have this kind of reality and see that or that uh, you know that boy who dances who who, who be, uh, he thinks that he's dead and you know he finds himself alive and he dances yeah. from so, the truck yeah yeah so all these kind of you know uh, i think as filmmakers we we are uh, we don't do our work uh, rightly or nicely or deeply otherwise how could we miss on such a treasure i mean it's uh, black to say that but if this kind of conflict has been happening in hollywood at least 200 good films would have would come in in 20 years but not even a single film with i'm um, i mean i may sound very arrogant but i didn't find anything in the mainstream i am talking about the small films which have come they try to do that but in the mainstream uh, hindi cinema we have been very unfair to kashmir so it's more than political i think it's the 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 human tragedy which has happened we wanted to underline and in that of course you know it's all political nobody is right nobody is wrong i mean everybody is walking on a string sometimes they are good it matters the point of view so sometimes they are bad basharat sorry what, what would no, you want to on up? on the point that jerry raised i mean sorry this this there's several things one of the you when you talked about language i mean one of the things you know there was a you know when you were in college and there's always a famous uh, nugugi watiango essay decolonizing the mind sort of you to sort of especially if you're in left wing colleges you always have to read that so <laughs> I mean, there was there was a great image uh, in which Watiango writes about Victorian literature. He writes, he even mentions Shakespeare, and and you know, like he talks about winter. Now, this is a African student in a colonized African country who has to read these British texts. I mean, the fact is, Shakespeare did not come here just just walking just as a tourist. Shakespeare came to India through colonialism. So there's a dark history too to how that wonderful writer comes to. a lot of the formerly colonized countries in asia and africa and look i'm a kashmiri i can understand the reference to snow but like somebody who was raised in jaipur in in rajasthan like there's there's so many references to weather or various other things or even the cultural mores that you don't quite get i i mean i started literature as a student sure i got my a's and i i i i passed and i i read my dickens and i read my standal and and you you read the critical theory but in some ways there was always like you know at some point as a very young man there was this idea of these these great writers are these dead white men and and those those are the books and those are the stories we have to look to in some ways to 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 the joy of for me and i know to a great extent uh, vishal has and i have talked about it the joy is to okay these these are great stories sure to to see it in our own may in way it's it's it could be like you know part of the journey of the empire writing back it's it's not just you know i want to find he he had the danish coat we'll put it in muzaffar in in merit and we'll put it in kashmir and and we'll think about this story using our own terms and you know we won't have a solo look in necessarily we'll have a great poem by faz ahmed faz so yeah, there is cultural politics there too in in re- reinventing old forms or, or or canonical western forms in a particular setting it's it's part of the long journey of interactions and and troubled histories so and in fact in fact we, t- we took a lot of liberties in this structure you know the play starts when the ghost appears and our ghost appears in the middle of the film in the middle yeah so we were trying to be you know very true to the soul of the play rather than the text of the play which which tim uh, before you get on to I want to just ask you one question and you raise an important issue about the purists approach don't fiddle with the text stage it as a play i mean your belief to my mind if you want to contemporize literature you have to make it relevant to the times that it exists in and to the travails and the miseries and the delight of people at that time do you believe there is a conflict an essential conflict in contemporizing literature and if you have to then tinker with the thematic plot like he said introduce the ghost the ghost in the middle how 
How would you react to that? I, I think, let, can I just make one thing clear? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not, and I make no claim to be a purist. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible idea, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm not one. But um, I, I think that, just to be clear, uh, there are many different ways to find relevance. And what we mustn't do is get reductive about that. One way to make old literature relevant to people now is to remake it in the way that you guys are. And that is absolutely not only valid, it's important and it's exciting. But then it becomes their Hamlet. It becomes their so it's William Hamlet. Peer. And I, and I think it's really, I just want to... I, William Bhardwaj Peer. I just, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not William Shakespeare. Exactly. And I just want to be clear that, that um, I think the discussion that followed what I said in a way proves my point. It's a film really about Kashmir. And it brilliantly uses the premise of Hamlet to explore Kashmir, in my view. If you want to give people, which you may not want to, if you want to give people an experience of Hamlet in its fullest being, I'm not saying it has to be done in the theater. You can do it any which way you want. One person can tell it on their own, or you can do it in the cinema, or you can do it in a big theater, or you can do it in a little room. They're all as valid. But if you want to give people an experience of Hamlet, then you wouldn't start with Kashmir. You'd start with Hamlet. And you'd find your way to Hamlet, and Hamlet will look much stranger, much more existential, much more poetic, much weirder, and much less specific, although it will have its politics, but it will have many other things as well. That's the nature of Hamlet. And, and, and just, yeah. just to finish the point, Jerry, that, that, that um, uh, this is there, you, you throw me now. So, uh, the, <laughs> no, so, so the point being that, uh, what did you ask me? Relevance. So, that's my point. That's amazing, huh? And, and that, and the ghost that, here appears at the end. And let me, let me finish with the ghost at the end. I believe, and I do believe this very strongly, and I have nothing but total praise for not only the trilogy, not only Haida, but for the trilogy, right? But you will find as much relevance at the end of that four-hour stage production of Hamlet as you will find in, in, in their brilliant Haida, if you do it well, if you get it proper. It will still have its relevance, and it doesn't matter what clothes they wear, although personally I don't, I don't go for Elizabethan. It's somewhere deep in the human story that you will find the relevance. So basically what he's saying is, Just the English still want to protect copyright over Shakespeare. <laughs> no, but no, 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 I think that... One way, one way, Jerry, let, let him... Let, just, um, yeah. <laughs> I think Shakespeare is, is like the, you know, the soil. We are making our trees of Hamlet over there. I mean, the basic Hamlet that, we, how can we forget if that, you know, zameen wahan pe nahi hai, to how can we even make our, our own tree point. or, I mean, how can we even argue about it? That, that pure purity of that text has to be there. Yeah, and can I just, I'm going to get very nerdy and historical here to point out a really interesting fact about the, the original Hamlet text. We talk a lot about what does Hamlet mean? Is it political? Is he very conservative? Is he radical? I've got to tell you as a historian who works on the Shakespearean text that there are three versions of Hamlet in Shakespeare's time. There's one that's published um, in 1603. It's 2,200 lines long. There's a second version which is published a year later in 1604, which is 4,000 lines long. It's nearly twice again. It's then published in 1623 in the great first folio, and it's 3,900 lines long. We have no idea which of those versions Shakespeare wanted. But what it tells you is that this is an incredibly open text. It's a text that people can, in effect, finish off. People have been finishing off Hamlet for the last 400 years. right? And so there's an openness to the text, which even when people don't historically realize it, I'm sure these guys didn't know that. But you've got a text which is very, very open to you. I don't think that Shakespeare ever finished it. I think he was writing it and rewriting it and had three goes at it. And in a sense, he died and implicitly said, over to you guys. And that there are two different versions. And then there's a version which, you know, Tim is absolutely right, that you can work with in performance on the stage. 
and also you can work with it cinematically. There are two different forms, and I'm hoping we're not sort of yeah. trying to create distinctions here. But, but, but I just, it's just it's an open <coughs> text, right? So we, we can't say what Shakespeare really wanted or not, and that is actually incredibly liberating. Okay, but I, I, I don't think uh, it's a this or that situation. I mean, both can exist, and, and both should coexist. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're different journeys to, to perhaps to different ends, or perhaps the same end. All mm. I want to say, just, just in return to for that fantastic quip about the English language copyright, I actually want to No, make the it, English uh, copyright, uh, not I, the I, language copyright. Oh, More see. people in India speak <laughs> correct English than the English themselves. <laughs> we still believe in Ren and Martin. You've forgotten them. That's true, that's true. And you're making the, the language new, aren't you, as well? Uh, we are introducing more words to the Oxford Dictionary than you are introducing to the English language. I, I'm, I'm not going to enter this battle here. <laughs> and you, you are in a minority in Jaipur. We're, uh, we're, we, we, we stand against majoritarianism of all but kinds. We respect Tim, you have some solidarity But nothing here. will happen to you because we respect our past. We don't dish it. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. No, I mean, the point you made is, I mean, it is, the cinematic form is also very different. I mean, fundamentally, you do want, you know, I mean, one of the big struggles Vishal and I had is, you know, he had done two Shakespeare when we were talking, like, in the, in the working of the screenplay itself. It's like, you know, I really wish we could do the soliloquies like they can do it in theater. But when, when you have a like, you know, two hour, 20 minute film, it's, it's also the, the, the nature of the, the medium. I mean, you know, the joy of, you know, uh, the, when, when, you know, apparel maketh a man. I mean, you know, Polonius, you know, I, I love those Royal Shakespeare Company's productions of it when he goes on and on. We even like, you know, thought of, we came up with Hindi versions and Urdu versions of those solo. But, but the screen time, I mean, you know, the nature of the, nature of the medium is such that, and that you, you just have to compress so much. And, and one of the things I learned part of this journey, you know, I didn't have much to do with film, is some of the things that we show very well, in, that, that a text of, say, several paragraphs illuminates or, or, or shines, or brings alive in, in text, or in, even in a theater production. In cinema, it's also this, you know, the visual. At times, it's just the moment of an eyebrow, like a touch of a hand, and you convey so much. Uh, so these course. are just different it, it, ways. And, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's brilliant work. It's brilliant work for that reason. I just want to clarify one thing so that, so that this conversation is clear. First of all, a lot of what the Royal Shakespeare Company has done has not been so great. Secondly, I don't sit here and uh, joking apart, I don't sit here as a British director. I might have a British passport. I don't see myself as working in a British context. That's where I was born. For me, the most interesting aspect of the work I'm doing on Shakespeare is not in the English language, is not with British actors. As I said, the Midsummer Night's Dream was created with Indian actors, only half of whom were speaking in, in English. My whole journey is to understand how other people are working on Shakespeare. My next project is a version of King Lear, which will be researched and performed by actors from all the great acting traditions of the world. That's the idea Wonderful. of the project. The only difference here, and it's a difference not worth remarking on for the argument or even a debate, because it's just a different journey. The only difference is, and I take slight issue with what Jerry said, of course it's an open text, of course there's no one version, and I'm not interested in any anal conversation about the one text that Shakespeare wrote. Not interested at all. The only difference here is that whether I'm working in English, Russian, Gujarati, or Tamil, my guiding code of language are the words that were written in the time of Shakespeare by somebody who probably was Shakespeare. That's all. And that's, <laughs> that's, my, that's my absolute... <coughs> That's my absolute conducting force. The only difference is what I don't do because I'm not good enough at doing it and it's not my journey is rewrite or adapt. And there is a difference, not for now, but there is a difference between adaptation and translation. And translation is my game and adaptation are these geniuses' game. And it's interesting <laughs> and it's Excellent. different. Okay? So while you're at it... And, I and think I'm not a, a British director. Okay, I'm not a British director. <laughs> I'm a theatre director. Okay. I live in the nation of theatre. Lovely. Thanks. So while you're at it, yeah. 
And since you believe in translation and not adaptation, right. will you translate Macbeth into Bengali? We have a Lady Macbeth in Bengal. Yes. Where is she? Is she here? Is she here? Yeah. I want to, before, before we open it out, no, Bashar is on me. Before we open it out to a Q&A, and this is not an idea which should be taken seriously. You know, I can get beaten up. I want, I want to end the panel before we move on to a Q&A for a, for a moment with, with a question to you, Vishal. There are some very, very interesting asides in the film, which lead obviously to the, you know, the whole, whole plot, as it were. There is obviously a critique of the manner in which the Indian armed forces have and continue to behave in Kashmir whether because the, because the law mandates them or whatever. Did you ever feel, not from a political standpoint, but from a social standpoint, given the respect that the average Indian outside Kashmir has for the Indian armed forces, you might be alienating emotionally a large part of the Indian psyche? Yeah, I think that, uh, that fear was there. And uh, it, it was not just me, but my financiers. All my actors who have read Shakespeare, Hamlet or, or, the, or not, but, <laughs> but yeah, everybody had uh, and uh, I'm, I'm so happy. I think it was, it was destiny, it was destined this film to be made. Otherwise, uh, today also when I look at the film, I get surprised that we got away with so many things. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and you mentioned and I, the, the whole film was shot in Kashmir. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me <coughs> add something to that uh, as well. You know, this, this idea that, look, this country publishes thousands of newspapers <coughs> and magazines. People here do watch a lot of films, but it will be preposterous to assume that the only information that the citizens of this country have about various wings of the government would come from one particular film. I mean, there are people who might willfully look away and not think about what's happening. But, you know, I mean, I worked, studied here, traveled around as a reporter for a pretty long time now, a good 15 years. People know what happens. Look, you might, th there's an idea of, a, of an institution which might be wonderful and poetic, but people do read things in reporters. I mean, then that would have been saying that all the work done by all the journalists reporting from Kashmir in the last 20 years came to nothing if nobody here knew that if you deploy even the best, most disciplined military, and it's not particular to the Indian military, you deploy any military, any armed forces with great powers in any civilian areas, there's bound to be, I mean, anyone who might have read history, I mean, sort of all the way from Nagaland, what happened when Nehru sure. was still alive? I'm not talking of lesser men. So, you know, to put that burden on, on, on a film to say, look, you're saying things which are not, I mean, if Bollywood hasn't done anything worthwhile, that's not this guy's problem. I mean, if we, we are making a film, it, we're not saying anything new. Look, the most sensitive things in that film, I've reported and written them, and hundreds of my colleagues have reported and written those things and said those things about, Indian Army, police, government, I mean, what, then, then all the writing came to nothing if, if, if it's all, it falls on a filmmaker who, to say that, yeah. oh, why did you do this? Go and burn all those newspapers and magazines and books. Okay. And, and, Obviously, and I think that was in the context of mainstream cinema seen no, no, as a lightning it's, it's, rod it's by a lot of people. It's part of the society. You can't yeah. just isolate this and so, say this is part of a film and not. So let's ask... I mean, the film is not made in an isolation. Sure. I mean, I was not. I worked. For, I started my life with an Indian newspaper where I reported those things. I, I worked at Rediff. I worked at Telka. I've written for Hindu. I mean, I've written for. I published a book which was published and sold like more than a hundred thousand copies in this country. It went eleven editions. All of that is published. I don't write in Jupiter. You live in this society. These are just different forms. Or Why go after this one guy who makes a film and puts some things? It no, doesn't, no, no. it's not no, a no. documentary history of Kashmir. No, while I respect your impassioned plea for no, your sterling just, I'm, achievements, I'm a writer and these the things context matter. was in the, f no, the question was in the context of mainstream cinema being but used but as a lightning rod by fringe elements in our country, I which let still remains. Let them do remains. it, man. Let them do it. Sure. You, you defend free speech, no, no, stand no. up for it. So the question was asked to him. I'm glad you answered no, no, I'm, it. I'm part of the so team. let's get back to Vishal. And a very important question. Which is going to be your next film? 
No, I think before that, I want to add what uh, Bashar has said. I think the, the biggest proof of that, that we were fearless and very honest, compassionate and truthful, that this is my most successful film so far and it was loved by all. And I, I have made money first time in my life on this film. So I think this is the, this is the greatest achievement and proof for me. On that note of material success, we will now open it out to uh, uh, questions and answers. Uh, you can direct your question to any of the panelists. I would only make one request. Please identify yourself and, and ask a question. Not, uh, and don't deliver a speech. Okay, so there's a, a lady, yes ma'am, in, 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 in the third row. Yes ma'am, there, there, the lady. No, ma'am, just wait for the microphone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohini Gulrajani. Uh, this question is directed to Vishal. Uh, Vishal, we all know about your greatest love for Shakespeare. Most of us have seen your trilogy. And all of the three films have a political content. But in them, Shakespeare forms the centerpiece. You see, I mean, it is Shakespeare. Shakespeare prepares tragedy. Whereas uh, Heather, and I'm saying it in a very complimentary manner, uh, Heather is about Kashmir tragedy, which happens to be given the, uh, you know, hemless uh, characters or whatever it is. So it is, it is less, of hem, uh, less of Shakespeare. So, so what, what's the question? My question is that would you agree that uh, Hamlet is more of, more, a film more about Kashmir tragedy rather than a okay. uh, play of Shakespeare. So this do you agree with her? Yeah, 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 I agree with you for, yeah. yeah. Matter ends? <laughs> well, he said it. I'm done. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I've always said that ladies are better students of Shakespeare than men are. <laughs> I'm Muniza Hashmi. Adap. I'm from Pakistan. Why? Why Fez? Why did you choose Fez? I'm his daughter. Gee, gee, I know. Excellent. What an amazing. Yeah, I know. What an amazing. Yes. And who else then, if not Fez? Is my only answer. I mean, Aaj ke naam aur Aaj ke gham ke naam. Ye kahan se likha jayega? Ye gulu me rang bhare baade no bahar chale. Ye kahan se likha jayega? Wah! हम देखेंगे लाजिम है कि हम भी देखेंगे वो होते तो पूरी फिल्म ही वही लिखते गाने भी वही लिखते और कौन लिखेगा कहां से लाए दूसरा फैज हम हाँ यस सर सो आई एम विकास भारद्वाज <laughs> my my <laughs> question is to Vishal Bhardwaji. So, I have asked Heather. What's in a name? <laughs> if the context is right. Uh, it is about Heather, of course. Uh, to me, uh, the weakest part of the film is the end, where you show the violence unnecessarily. And one thing which uh, uh, which left me very much curious is that uh, why. Uh, why the character of Claudius, that is Khurram, only loses his legs. So, you know, he... Uh, no, why, uh, why, why do you not kill him? So, but, yeah. Is, I, I mean, why you have deviated from the text? I think when you make this film, you kill him fully. So, <laughs> and if you think the violence is unnecessary, the wrong message, then I, I don't think it's a weakness or I think it's the biggest strength. The film is saying something. Because we took the biggest liberty in the play where, yeah, because the, in that Hamlet also, Hamlet is also killed and Hamlet kills his uncle and here we took this liberty and I think it worked for me and for Basharat, if not for anybody else. Uh, uh, Jerry wants to come in on this. It, it's, I think it's a stunning ending. It just made me gasp. You know, I've seen so much so many versions for Hamlet, and I think it's just brilliant, both the ending with Gertrude and with Hamlet. Can I give it away? Can I say what happens? The fact that Hamlet, because, uh, because, because Hamlet lives, he doesn't ascribe to the, to the cycle of revenge. And we always say he's a tragic hero because he has to die. And you leave him living, and he walks away. 
and it's completely breathtaking. It, well, it, it raises the question, of course, he has to die because it's a tragedy, so there's an interesting issue about that, but this for me is a deeply, deeply tragic film, and it, it devastated me, absolutely, in a, in a wonderful way. So I think it's, I'm sorry, and anyway, the violence in Shakespeare? Uh, one minute here, now, you know, there are too many, yeah, but that side we've already covered, we've got to be balanced. I've never understood how we define questions as small. Short, I can understand. Uh, okay. But small, is it no, the no, smallness? Small small. Ah, it's a short. Okay. Yeah, it's a short question. I must say, in the, uh, uh, it's an excellent film, Vishal, and I loved it. The poetry of Faz is excellent. The way you have used music, it's excellent. The question is ah. that there's a, tragedy, <laughs> there's a tragedy of Hamlet and there's a tragedy in Kashmir. But the tragedy in Kashmir is twofold. There's one tragedy which affects the Muslims, there's another tragedy which affects the Kashmiri Pandits. You have highlighted only one tragedy and ignored the other. That's what. Yeah, I will, I, I, I'm prepared for this question because uh, I knew <laughs> that this is going to come. I think that tragedy is not a less tragedy at all. But the cinema gives you a time and it, it's my choice because I was making that film in the particular time where it didn't allow me to focus on that tragedy more or, or at all. There's just one token line I have been told about it. But I think somebody should have, uh, now I'll take the name, Mr. Vinod Chopra made uh, uh, Mission Kashmir. Did you ever ask him that question? He's a Pandit himself. <laughs> Did you ever ask him? That was early days. The film was <coughs> made in 2000 and Exodus happened in 1989. No, no, I mean, so then why grill me? <laughs> and I'm, I mean, on, I know the kind of things have been said to me. I was not being insensitive. It's just that, that, that my film time period didn't allow me to go over there. And I, I have said this in my interviews also, I think that tragedy is not a less tragedy at all what happened to them. You know, overnight, three lakhs people were thrown out of their homes. They became refugees in their own country is a big subject to make. But, you know, I'll definitely make, I, I want to make that kind of film if, whenever I feel like. But when I look back and the people from your own community, they are in power. They had the power, they made the film in Kashmir and they didn't, didn't talk about pundits and you don't ask them anything. Okay, ma'am. Uh, my, my name is Deepika and in spite of having grown up in Delhi, I was fortunate enough to have Shakespeare in my life. So my question is about um, the, the way you handle the relationship between the mother and the son. And it was done very beautifully and very subtly. The question is, were you not worried that the Indian audience may not be ready for this? And what kind of reactions have you had since? Yeah, I was not worried. I was a little concerned because nothing should be, um, you know, it, it should be within the limits of our culture permits us. So I was worried that it should not be repulsive and uh, it should not give you a very you know, sickening feeling, but it exists and I want to talk and film it, I could have ignored it, but I think beautifully a mother kisses on his son's lips in the end and it was accepted, nobody gave me, I mean, I was expecting that, you know, something, some more uh, abuses come for this also, but uh, I mean, it got <laughs> appreciated. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Nishtha and the question is to Vishal and Basharat. Uh, when you were adapting Shakespeare, did you also look at other dead white authors? <laughs> while my making, God. Yes, while, while, <laughs> while making sense of it, particularly the incest part. For example, did you look at D.H. Lawrence and how he deals with the question of incest in Sons and Lovers? No. No. <laughs> No, he wants to say no. <laughs> okay, so the lady there, with the, with the hat, with the cap. Uh, 
Uh, good evening. Uh, my question is to Vishalji and Basharat. Basharat, I met you at the Kashmir Kashmir section some years back, <laughs> if you remember. And I am adding up to that short question. I am adding up to the short question. Uh, movie on terrorism, fine. 25 years of exile. We still don't have anything about it. You know, People don't know the facts. What, and when do we go back home? The question stands there. Look, do I, mean, do I, I need to, to be more theatrical about it now? It's not no, theatrical. No, no, no. I was, I was it's not being theatrical, theatrical about it's the being answer. It's producing look, look, facts. Look, producing I mean, it's, facts. It's, an, it's an important question and let me answer that. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you a technical tricky thing about this film. It's based on a play which is about one family in which the villain and the hero are blood brothers. And in that setting. So at the time at which we adapted it, it's 95. And then I could have easily, look, I know the Kashmir, I have reported from the camps, I have reported that story, I, I was at Nadi Mug, I was in all those places. So I know that story much better than most people who talk about it. And I've written in my book about it. So I could have done tokenism, okay. right? It's not difficult in a three hour film to throw in 10 minutes about pundits. But that would be insulting. Okay. Uh, right? I don't want to do tokenism. This is not a quota system. It's, it's a great human story. And it's a shame that no one has made a real, I mean, those Ashok Pandit makes that rubbish sheen and all that. I mean, it's insulting the community. It's a community of great intellectuals and sensitive people. Kahan hai? Who Kahan hai hai? Said, say, please but, say again. I'm, who? I'm serious. I mean, uh, a very dear friend of mine, Maharaj Kol Santoshi, who is from Anantnag like me, Maharaj is, has written the most beautiful novella about it, Mere Bhagwan Ko Tehna Nahi Aata. So, why don't you make a film on it? Look, I knew nothing about the films. I wrote a book, I've written one book in which I wrote about it. We had a film set in a particular time because it was the compulsion of a Shakespeare adaptation. It's not, Mere bhoat Kashmiri Musalman dos kehte hai, ki tumne 91 kiyo nahi dikhaya, Gau Kadal mein hazaru malah so ke so loogun ke masakar huye, handwara jala gaya, sopor jala diya gaya, gaun ke gaun jala diya, wo kiyo nahi dikhaya. See, this is, we did not set out to make Battle of Algiers, or, or, or a visual documentary of the history of Kashmir. When Vishal came to me, I met him in Delhi in a hotel, we hung up coffee. He said, Yaar, main Shakespeare trilogy complete karna chahta. Isma ye mumkin ho paaya, lekin jo aapne sawal puchha hai, ye is desh ke liye sharam hai ki koi kisi ne aaj tak achhi film us pe nahi banai. Okay, we will end the session, and it can end in no better way than with a question by Girish Karnat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, my question is short. I thought it was brilliant the way the whole political anguish of uh, Kashmir becomes Hamlet in the film. My only objection was that it suddenly drained out in the last 20 minutes. Kashmir went out of the picture, we only had Hamlet. If you see what I mean, I mean there is no politics at all in the last 20-25 years. It becomes individual tragedy. In that sense I felt the script was too close to Shakespeare because that's what happens in Hamlet also. Hamlet has the most boring ending of all his four uh, 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 tragedies because suddenly everyone is saying, Hamlet, I'm killed, Hamlet, I'm killed. You know, none of this sort of, uh, you know, strong ending that you get in Lear and so on. Now, uh, that, uh, that I felt weakened the film. That's all I want to say. Sorry. Yeah, no, sir, I, I'll take it as a, you know, I'll go back and because I'm too close to the subject right now, it's very difficult for me to to understand what you were saying. I can understand, but to, you know, uh, how to react on this. I really, I'll go back and, because Nasir Saab still says, I wish if he was here. He says uh, always that uh, uh, in Macbeth, your uh, your Makbul, the second half is rubbish. So, uh, and, so, you know, I, I still, I have not been able to understand. But, uh, but no, no, no. When I now, now when I look back and you know see from his point of view, I find some points. But definitely, you know, I'll I'll look at the film again and the script from what you're saying. I should be saying, sir, thank you. Uh, but that's a really interesting point because in the in the play you have Fortinbras. Somebody comes in at the end and says, "I'm taking over here," right? And I remember I, I, I lived in uh, East Berlin for some time, and when Heiner Muller, who, another great global version of, of, of Shakespeare's play, when he performs it, Fortinbras is very important because you've just had a unified East and West Germany, and everybody's saying, who is Fortinbras? Now, it seems to me, from my limited knowledge, you can't have Fortinbras in your story. Yes. So 
they've got a structural problem which slightly answers your question, it seems to me. I can see why you're asking it, but the adaptation doesn't allow it because the politics actually doesn't. And so in that way, I'd end by saying, you've again been very, very ethically faithful to the situation that I can see. On that note, may I thank the panel and thank each one of you for being a delightful audience and have a splendid evening and enjoy Shakespeare. We'd like to thank uh, Vishal Bharadwaj, Vashad Peer, Dim Sapul, Jerry and